What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Saturday, and welcome to this week's episode of Ask TNH Live. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and we are live right now with our folks on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow us already, follow us right now at Theo and Harris, so you can join in on next week's live episode. Let's get into it. Okay, uh, Hazanoff75 asked, can I recommend a wine to try on Liquor Run? Um, recently been to Georgia, country, not the state in USA. Amazing wines, unique technology. Um, yeah, recommend a wine. Uh, if any of you guys have a recommendation for Liquor Run or a question about wine uh, or the topics that we talk about, check us out. If you guys haven't already checked out Liquor Run, I recommend you do. It's a really, really fun series. I think it's super appropriate that it's our Friday series, you know, because we kick back, you know, with, with a glass of wine. We, it's when my dad and I kick back with a glass of wine, you know, he brings some wine talk, I bring some watch talk, uh, and we just have some fun, you know. We've talked about icons and watches, we've talked about our least favorite Rolexes, we talk about, you know, uh, Breitlings and why we like, we want to really like the company, but, you know, it's it's hard sometimes. Um, you know, not, not super highbrow, like crazy, you know, crazy talk, but, uh, you know, real, just fun conversation. So, so, uh, so check it out. How do you feel about a yellow gold day date for a 28 year old? Um, a great question. I mean, but no, I don't feel anything about it. I mean, you know, the, the question, the, the, the subtext and the question here is, am I a dick if I were a day date at 28? Well, no, if you're a dick, you're a dick, you know? And, and, and if, if you're a dick wearing the yellow gold day date, that's what I'm gonna point to. Like, oh, look at him, this yellow gold presidential Rolex, like, wow. You know, it's one of the things I'm gonna point to when I, when I roast you. Um, but no, that watch does not make you a dick um, by any means. You know, if, if you're popping bottles, you know, at a club and you're loud and you're a douche and you're, you know, you're grabbing people, you know, it's, yeah, you look like an asshole, you know, and the watch doesn't make it any better. Um, but no, if you can, if you can afford a yellow gold day date at 28 or 19, for God's sakes, uh, go ahead. You know, it's, it's got nothing, uh, you know, no, no one, no one that's intelligent is going to think any less of you. Um, where are your glasses from? We like that, really like them. Uh, these are from Warby Parker. They're a hundred bucks. Uh, I, I really uh, believe in, in value on all aspects of everything I consume, whether that's a, a suit supply suit, a Kamakura shirt, you know, Levi jeans, um, whatever it may be, uh, Warby Parker glasses, vintage watches. I want to get more for my money. That's it. And that doesn't mean I won't spend a lot of money. You know, you don't need a $4,000 watch by any means. Um, but if I'm gonna spend $4,000 on a watch, I want it to be really, really, really good. I want it to be much better than other $4,000 watches. Uh, same way I feel about glasses and wine and things like that. You know, I, rem I remember buying a pair of sunglasses, the last pair of sunglasses before I went to Arby Parker was a, was a pair of Ray-Bans, and they were like $700 eyeglasses, you know? And I was like, oh, what a way, you know, this is an unfortunate reality that I'm gonna have to deal with for the rest of my life. That I, that the pair of eyeglasses I get every year are 700 bucks, you know, and then the next year I found Aubrey Parker and they saved me since. Uh, thoughts on the two-tone Daytona, awesome, or does it mean you didn't pony up for an all gold Daytona? Really good question, Paul. Um, damn. Um, no, I, I don't think two-tone means you didn't pony up. Um, I don't because you know the, the culture around two tone. Like I think American Psycho. You know those guys. The American Psycho. The, the you know um, I was gonna say Patrick Bateman film. The what is his name? What was the guy's name? Christian Bale film. Uh, that that movie epitomizes you know two tone Rolexes, right? The, the two tone Rolex he was wearing was by choice, not by you know not not because he couldn't afford the yellow gold date, right? It was the, it was the watch to wear. You know the guy had a you know. Eight million dollar Manhattan apartment, you know. So, so, so no, I think that the culture around two tone is not that of oh they can't afford uh, uh, you know yellow gold. I'm sure that for some people it is, but no, that's not that's not my perspective. But as far as the two tone Daytona, it's it's funny. I mean, there, there is no two tone heritage, you know, in the Daytona world. That was something that was introduced. Um, I don't know when, in the 90s, right? 80, 80s or 90s, probably the 80s or 90s. Uh, I don't know, it's not something I would buy. I, I wouldn't buy a two-ton Daytona, but I don't think it looks like you didn't spring for a gold one. 
you know, so. Two-tone is sort of uh, nah, uh, flashy, steel or gold, not both. Um, I, I don't agree, I actually like two-tone a lot. I, I didn't think I would like two-tone as much as I do until I bought uh, a 70s two-tone Datejust uh, Jubilee bracelet, uh, silver dial, uh, wide boy. That was the first two-tone watch that I really loved. Like, like genuinely was like, was passionate about. Uh, Chris, the two-tone 6265 from the Philips sale. Uh, yeah, that's a fake watch. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just not, it's just not kosher. Like, you know, um, ask a lot of people, uh, a lot of serious Rolex specialists. Not, I don't, I'm not citing myself here. I'm just parlaying information that I've been told uh, that that watch was uh, supposedly uh, very, 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 very questionable. Um, so, you know, same, same thing with, same thing with the with the day date with that Submariner or Explorer dial that, that came out. I think Christie's are selling it. I'm not saying that was a fake watch by any means. Um, but one of the points that was brought up, the the, the, the major um, point of like validation on that watch was that Rolex serviced it, and we all know that Rolex wouldn't touch anything they weren't weren't sure was real. Well, if you guys have ever you know dealt on the service end of a watch you can remove and replace a dial before you do like before you send it into service for rolex it's had nothing to do with it so we're, you know where is the proof that you know i didn't have my watch dial swapped and then sent to rolex you know and you know you know what i'm trying to say like it, it, that that was not proof that was very like swiss cheese evidence so uh so that, that's it you know and once again not to say that that's a fake watch um, but the evidence that it was real was kind of weak. Uh, say, and, and the same thing as the, as the 6265. Uh, I mean, I think one of the biggest points on that watch was, okay, we, we all knew that the bezels, the bezels were real. Uh, it could have been a replacement. Uh, the, the crowns were pre, was it, they were pre-82 crowns and the watch dated to 84. So like there was a lot of, you know, uh, sketchy shit going on with that watch. What do you think about white gold Submariners? Uh, one on my wrist two days ago it was very awesome. The shine was very nice. First glance, although I still zoom in. Yeah, what, what do I think about a white gold Submariner? Um, unmistakable to anyone that like you know knows Rolex, but for most people, um, like people like us, you know, we would know what a Smurf is. Most people would not. Uh, I think that your white gold Submariner would definitely be viewed as a steel watch. Does that matter to you? I don't know. Um, I would, if, you know, I say right now. One of the top three watches in Rolex I would buy right now is the white gold GMT. I don't care what metal people think it is. I know what it is. I think it's a really, really, I don't even like it because it's gold. I just like it because it's the watch that Rolex is teasing everyone with. They don't want to produce the steel GMT yet. And this is their teaser. Um, and it's super under the radar and, and it's beautiful. I would buy the watch. You know, if I had the money, you know, uh, but uh, but that, that's that's where I would go. So no, I don't have a problem with the fact that it, it's it's a mistake for steel. That's that's fine for me. Nautilus or Yachtmaster ever rose on rubber? Um, good question. The, the Patek Philippe, which which should uh, con sand buy? Uh, the Nautilus or the uh, the rose gold uh, Yachtmaster uh, on rubber? Um, it really comes down to what kind of person you are. Personally. I would go Nautilus um, because I like to get dressed like like formally a lot and I wouldn't wear a rubber strap with a suit. That doesn't mean that you can't. It's just something that I wouldn't do. So that really comes down to personal preference. Uh, I also think the Nautilus has a better shot to appreciate in the coming you know months, years. But uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Talked about a lot of shit today uh, and uh, covered a lot of topics and had some fun. Thank you guys again so much. Please like this video uh, if you enjoyed anything we talked about um, and subscribe to the channel at Theo and Harris uh, for more consistent watch content.